Thank you. This yeah. looks really good. Thank you. Why is it that I always had to believe that you this is an online store. thing? <laughs> I always thought so. Yeah, I think because how we portray it on social yeah. media. But we do have an outlet to, yeah. to give people the opportunity to come and do Check this, stuff and everything. This, yes. And you know, you won the Carnivine Municipal Youth Award did, yeah, for I Entrepreneur. Did. Yeah, this is good. The reason is because I'm sure it's because of the breakthrough and the unique story behind Quick 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 Cook. Rose. It's a, what? <laughs> you know what? You have to be like Quick Cook. Yes. You Can know, you say it fast like Quick Cook? No, I should bet. I should give a ten thousand for someone to, to just say, do it. Qu quick Cook ten times. Do it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, congratulations Thank for this. You. So it's Quick Cook and Rose of Freak. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited to also know what happened to Rose Afrique, you know, so we're just going to head right on yes. and you're going to give me more details on that. I will. Yeah, you should, <laughs> because, um, you know, if you're a keen follower of Youth Dialogue, mm -hmm. I think three years ago we had a session, yes, three years ago, and you talked about, at that time, Quick Cook did not come. It was before COVID. It, was, it was before COVID. COVID. That's when COVID. Yes, came. just after that, then COVID came. Yeah. So let's just move on. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Stay tuned. Let's head right on. Rosa Freak. Yes. <laughs> there we have it. Yeah, nice. Yes. Wow, it's been three years already. You know, the fact that time really flies. Like. Yeah, yeah. And COVID-19, because of the COVID-19 uh, as well, you know, time just went by really quick mm -hmm. as well, considering. True, true. Yeah, so, you know, tell me, what, what actually happened to Rosa Freak? Yes, yeah, so when I started the Quick Cook brand. Right. I figured at that point people really needed food mm -hmm. and nobody was, not even nobody, people did, were not even looking in this direction of right. fashion products. Mm -hmm. So I figured let me give it more of my energy and mm -hmm. less of this. So I was doing like more of 90 10. Yeah. So you could actually see I have been working, I have started. These are patterns I've not even released yet. They are brand new patterns. Wow. You could see the pins. That, so these have been there for over a year. Wow, yes, wow, wow. I walk in my own free time. These mm -hmm. are patterns. So these are throw pillows. Okay. Oh, they're throw pillows. Yeah. So, nice. And they're very unique designs. Yeah. And it it's just here. It's just for now. For yeah. For now, <laughs> for right? Now, it, it will have its final. So day why day. quick cook at a time during the COVID nineteen exactly. pandemic? Like I was saying, people prefer to people needed to eat. Yeah. And people were scared to go out. Right. Everybody just wanted things comfortable for them. So yeah. I figured. The food brand will do more. So mm -hmm. I then f um, focus more on the Quick Cook brand, um, producing leafy greens, mm -hmm. complementary ingredients. And I saw how people really appreciated that and how they were really, really going in for it. And also at that point, I figured the Rose Africa brand and what we were doing is mm -hmm. already saturated in the market. Okay. Now, if you go to most trade fairs, you will see exactly what we are doing repeated by, you know, other young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, which is good. I'm mm -hmm. not saying no to it. So, Rose, do you think it's a good idea that, you know, everybody's doing the same thing at some point? Aren't you taught that, you know, young people are supposed to be innovative? What do you think about that? Yes, um, I think they should be innovative. But again, mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of young people trying to emulate what some of us have done. Okay. So, it's for me, it's not a problem because mm -hmm. doing that will allow them to find out what their passion are and okay. what their most creative um, things are. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a platform where it's an opportunity for everybody to swim in. Okay. And then you find yourself. I found myself there. Okay. Like, this is what I was doing, but I swam, swam, and then with my creative mind, I figured, oops, there's a calling for food. Okay. But that doesn't mean I am not doing But it. at the time that you were doing this, it was not everywhere. When I started in 2016, no, it wasn't everywhere. Okay, so but you could have decided to done some. You could have decided to do something that everybody was doing, doing and yes. you did not. Why didn't you? Because I'm a creative person. Okay, so that is why you have to encourage young people out there to be creative, to do things mm -hmm. based on not because Rose is doing it, because Jenaba is doing it. That is when you stand out. That is what how you make money yes. at the end of the day. What do you think? You're the you're the you're the entrepreneur here, not me. Yes, I I honestly totally agree with what you're saying, but. It will take time for them to get there. Okay. Because uh, we all used to this slogan, Gambia, copy it. Okay. <laughs> That's what we all say. Yeah. But I feel that if we leave them in the situation or the stage at which they are mm -hmm. at, yeah. they will grow from it. Okay. Because you wouldn't want to be making books for the rest of your yeah, life. Okay. You would want to learn something else, right? Yeah. So when you start doing the books and you realize, oh, if I add uh, a cowrie shell here, it will yeah. be different. Yeah. That's how creativity starts. And yeah. that's how I yeah. started. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll all get there at one point. So how did business itself come about? You went to school. 
we all know mm -hmm. in Gambia here, even when you do commerce, it does not mean that they teach you how to handle your business. Yes. You yes. get to learn that later. Yes. So how did the idea of business come about yes. instead of going to pursue a bachelor's or a master's right, or a PhD, right. you know? Yes. So for me, everything started out of curiosity and I grew up in a home where I saw my foster parents doing entrepreneurship from a different level. I didn't understand it as entrepreneurship by then. At a time. Yeah, but I saw them buying, selling, doing things. And yeah. I was really passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So growing up until 2016 during the political impact, right. the country was at still, people yeah. weren't doing anything. So I started playing around with all of these old um, fabrics from tailoring shops. Right. Started making crunches, mm -hmm. books and stuff. And I figured there is a market for it. Like I yeah. said on my uh, previous interview. Yeah. So a friend of mine um, asked for a bag because she was traveling. I did it and then she used it. But for me, it's after selling over 25 different products. Yeah. I figured this is interesting. You're giving people value for yeah, money. Yeah. So I began to take it very serious. And yeah. at that time, I used to work at Royal Insurance. Oh, wow. So my MD then um, suggested I should do the Emprotect training. Yeah. I did the training. Like, I was really focused because growing up as well, I wanted to be my own boss. Yeah. I wanted to wake up at my own time, make my own money. All right. So I did the Emprotect training, focused on it. And then I think it was out of curiosity again. Yeah. Curiosity, passion, mm -hmm. but when I was turning 30, yeah. everything changed for me. I think that's when I went to the spiritual being yeah. of myself. So when I was turning 30, I went on my knees and yeah. I prayed to God. Right. I figured at that point I was doing so many things. So imagine doing You this, were in focus. This, 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 yes. this, like it was too much. Yeah. So I prayed to God. I was like, you know me better. You created me from birth. You know, where, you know my future more than I do. Yes. So at this point, I leave everything into your evil hands just lead me and mm. if this is what my calling is make it easy mm -hmm. and it has been easy since then amazing <laughs> uh, the products still look good even though they've been here for like a very long time uh, yes. they still look good and i really think you should go ahead and launch no. this collection no, definitely, I you will. should you I should will. launch it we miss rose Africa. you know i used to have you know some cute little Air rose Air Africa Air earrings Air with a with a thing that you know i read the news with and everybody started asking me yeah. about it yeah. so i think really now that covid is gone i definitely is COVID think gone? covid i mean <laughs> we have the vaccine we have the booster i took um sinopharm and i also took the booster okay. you know the booster and okay. uh, you know some people took the johnson and johnson mm -hmm. so as long as there's a covid vaccine i'm here with you we're not social distancing and we're okay so we, we thank God that, you know, things are going as planned. Yeah. That is the most important thing. But generally, how was the issue of finance to keep Rose Africa uh, going? We're still on Rose Africa. We're still on Rose Africa. Yes. So finance has ever been a challenge and it's still a challenge. Right. It's not good to say, but I think it will ever be a challenge. Yeah. So with the Rose Africa brand... It was self-funded. Mm -hmm. I have never had a single grant. In okay. fact, I have never had a grant in this country since okay. I started business. Okay. Why so, is that? You didn't apply? I have applied several times. And they never called you for a grant? No, never. Okay. Why so, do you think that is? Honestly, I can't give a definite answer because I know I've given all applications my best mm -hmm. and I've answered questions to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. So reason for not being selected is beyond me. Okay. <laughs> I can't okay. Really tell. Okay. Yeah, but so everything I've been doing um, with the Rose Africa brand has been self-financed. Okay. Starting from my savings when mm -hmm. I used to work. And yeah, so that's how everything grew. Even with the Quick Cook as well. Yeah. We started Quick Cook off mm -hmm. what we made from the Rose Africa Africa brand. brand. And mind you, I still have customers from Rose Africa that reach out okay. up to date. Okay. Even though it's not things that I publish, but people will call me that they need diaries like 2024. Oh, yeah. I'm currently making 24, 2024 diaries, mm -hmm. notebooks. People do call me. Like All right, customers right. that have been there still yeah. know that the brand is there, but it's not really active. But I've been doing um, products on the Rose Africa brand. Okay, so access to finance is really a major problem it for is. young people. It is. So you have to be smart know how to do things. So training is key because through the Empatrick training, very. you were able to develop, right? Yes. I did over oh five different trainings okay. aside the Empatrick. I did training on packaging. I did um, training on finance. I did training on branding. Nice. Like, there's so many different trainings I've that, done. That, that, you, that you've yeah. done. That is this very important. Look good on your head, it right? will look good. We should try it because <laughs> we're going to get to the kitchen. Yes. Help me. Yes. There. Oh, so you're going to put the hair inside. Chef. Oh, wow. I, I love it. And you know that I'm not a bonnet person. Why not? I don't know. Like, I'm just... So what do you do when you go to bed? 
I just go to bed because I have a haircut. <laughs> so I just go to bed. No, I don't normally no, wear I a think bonnet. The bonnet will do because you need to keep your hair moisture. Yes, spray it just to, to ensure yeah. that your hair is doing well. Mm -hmm. And I have very um, dry hair. It looks cute. Wow, I love it. So we're just going to head to the kitchen now. Yes. And you know what? One thing I love about you is the fact that there was a time we were having a conversation mm -hmm. and you talked about how you have tons of mentors. Yes. <laughs> so how does that help? Um, it really helps. So for what I have learned is, as an entrepreneur, there are different sides to a business that you don't know all. Okay. So if you have different people with different um, skills and different um um, different career path. Yes, it would really, really help in in my business, for okay. instance. So I have a mentor who is focused in um, who is an accountant. Okay. So that helps with my account. True. So I have one who is in marketing. Yeah. It helps in my marketing. I have one who is an artist. Yeah. So you can see that my logos are artistically designed. Right. They're totally different from many other logos. Uh, logos, right. So I have different mentors in different uh, career parts of life. Right. And They've guided me to what I am today, and I'm grateful to each and every one of them. Yeah. I can't mention all of them yeah. because they're quite a number. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. So these were made from old Pringles cup. Yeah, yes, and some form of recycling. Yes, and these are I tea love shells. This. Okay, that you just crush. Mm -hmm. I and love it. I've got my brushes in it, and that's it. That's it. Amazing. So now let's shift to the real deal. The real deal. The real deal currently, <laughs> which is Quick Cook. So we're just going to take a look at Quick Cook and. Um, the amazing story behind Quick Cook, mm -hmm. which, which you already delved into. The COVID-19 pandemic was really challenging, but not to everyone. A lot of businesses grew. A lot of businesses um, were established mm -hmm. through the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's about when challenges happen, what opportunities you're able to make from it. And I'm really proud that young people like yourself are able to take these challenges and turn them into sustainable opportunities. So let's head right on to the kitchen. And take a look at what the kitchen is saying. It's been a while since. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So let's just shift there. Yeah, all right. Believe it. Believe it. had a conversation on Rose Afrique mm -hmm. and you convinced me that it didn't die. You managed to do that. Yes. Now we are about to talk about the real deal, which is about um, Quick Cook and how it came about generally yes. and what you're doing with it. So we have gloves here that we're going to wear because we'll be cooking just yes. to make sure everything is going well. I'm going to get that off. Yep. So generally, mm -hmm. how did it really come about? I know it's with the COVID and everything, but I know there's a story yeah, behind yeah, it. So tell me, I want to know. Yes, so um, my mom is mm -hmm. an oyster harvester, but before going into oyster harvesting, she was mm -hmm. a domestic household. Okay. So she did that for over 30 years. Okay. And when COVID hit as well, mm -hmm. she had to look for other alternatives, so she went into oyster harvesting. Okay. And if you know oyster harvesting in the Gambia, it's mainly done by women, mm -hmm. predominantly. Right. 90% of them are jewelers. Yes. And most of them are from my tribe, yes. which is where my mom is from. Okay. So I started buying the oysters from my mom and mm -hmm. selling because we're going to do the onions first. Yeah. So I saw how my mom would mm -hmm. struggle with um, oysters mm -hmm. when they go harvest. They go harvest like 5 a.m. Yeah. And they're there till 6, 7 p.m. And mm -hmm. then when they come, they have to go through the whole process. After right. the process, you know, go sell it at the market. So mm -hmm. that was very tedious. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur and with my skills, mm -hmm. I started buying the oysters of her. Yeah. And then adding value and then resell. Okay. So that's how I started off with mm -hmm. the oysters. Right. So I did the oysters for about just oysters. Just oysters. Okay. So I did the oysters for about three, four months mm -hmm. and then I I also love going morning walks at the market. Okay. Being because when I go I see for instance, when you go to the market, this is how you see the vegetables. Yeah. You see green, you see yellow, you yeah. see orange, and it's very, very attractive. Yeah. So I love the sight of that. Yeah. So this particular day I went and I saw the woman throwing away leafy greens. Okay. Getting, getting, getting oh, right, 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 right. Like a whole lot. And it didn't go down well with me. Okay. So I was like, I know for a fact that one of the reasons being is they couldn't sell it. Yeah. They don't have the storage facility. They just had to get rid of yeah, it. And they don't have the skills to also preserve them or increase the shelf life. Right. So I came home, I thought about it again. Because growing up, like I said, this is what we do at home. Mm -hmm. When um, vegetables are in season, mm -hmm. we buy a lot and then we keep in the freezer to use when it's off season. Right. So I came home, I processed a mm -hmm. few of the leafy greens. I started off with just four leaves. Yeah. 
So after doing that, I froze them in the freezer, kept right. it here for about three months, mm -hmm. and then sent it to Dakar, where my other in-laws are. Okay. So I think they also kept it for a month, mm -hmm. and then they cooked it, and it tasted really good. They were like, nothing is wrong with this. So I'm like, that's a problem. That's a point. So that's how everything started. How are you dealing with the onions? Oh my God, my eyes. <laughs> 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 Who's chopping onions? Me! I'm chopping onions. <laughs> yes, I, I, you know, I have these allergies, mm -hmm. so it just comes and goes. No, but no, it does happen. Yes, it's, it's right there. It's, it's happening. It's yes, happening. but it's. Oh, it's just, oh, Usa. Yes, Usa. <laughs> How do you know Usa? <laughs> But anyway, yeah. back to business. Mm -hmm. So you saw the women were throwing out, you know, they, they decided to throw the leafy greens mm -hmm. and all of that. So they, they had it there in Senegal with your in-laws and they said it was perfect. Yeah, so they cooked it after, after keeping it here for three months or so, I sent it to them and they, used, they kept it for a month and yeah. then they cooked it and it tasted the same way. So I figured that's a product and there's something I could do about it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started. So I started off with four leafy greens, mainly mm -hmm. the green, mm -hmm. the sorrel, moe bisap, mm -hmm. the kereng kereng. Right. And I did that for a month or two. Mm -hmm. And then I figured it's not making sense. Because yeah. for me, my main goal for this business is for you to shop at my shop mm -hmm. with less hassle. Yeah. And going home without going through the whole preparation mm -hmm. um, process. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, if I'm just selling the greens without the complementary ingredients, it doesn't make sense. Because yeah. we still have to go back to the market. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I started adding complementary ingredients to main meals. Mm -hmm. So man, I'm sorry, talk a super. I'm then kereng kereng, I'm then kanya, I'm then kong, I'm then juice. Yeah, so, so you can shop, one stop shop. For everything. Okay. For a particular meal. Okay. So that's how it's been going. Okay, at, 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 at that time. Yes. But apart from that, the packaging and everything, what is the importance of proper packaging in, in business? You know, I know the young entrepreneurs better take your book and your pen right now because you're going to have to take some tips from Rose yes. who was able to successfully transition. You know, normally when you start a business newly, mm -hmm. one challenge is transitioning, oh, yeah. changing, oh, yeah. rebranding. It it's something that is very, very difficult. A lot of businesses have failed mm -hmm. after they started one thing and wanted to jump off to another. Mm -hmm. So you have to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. So if you're one person who's, you know, looking along those lines, you better take your pen and a paper mm -hmm. and be writing some of these tips. So, the, you know, the importance of branding because I I see how much you value branding. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't joke with it. Yeah. So one of the important is it sets you apart from your competitors. Mm -hmm. It enables your customers to shop right. Yeah. Because when they come, everything is visible. They mm -hmm. can read the colors are there, the mm -hmm. wordings are there. So it makes it easy for them. For instance, this one, mm -hmm. you can tell it's quick cook. Mm -hmm. You can tell these are contact details. You could tell this is boiled oysters because everything is boldly written. The instructions are there. Rinse before cooking. The grammage is there. So and it's just there and it's really visible yes so this is one of the most important thing it sets you apart and then it um, gives your customers the vision or the view to just grab your product because it's easy for them to read to see and to, to touch to touch so how do you want this so we're gonna because one thing about me when i'm working with vegetables mm -hmm. i love to grow the seeds okay i am a i'm a nature person mm -hmm. So we slice it open and then we separate we the separate. seeds. We separate, okay. So I can grow you want to have your gas on? Time is going. Yes. I want to have some oysters. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So so the, the, the branding aspect that you mentioned, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young entrepreneurs, you know, lack those kinds of, you know, concepts about branding and making mm -hmm. sure that they do it right, it, which is very important. You are a Mandela Washington fellow. Yes, and that I have to, because you know, with the Mandela Washington, you you apply for the track, which is the business leadership track, in business. leadership in business, mm -hmm. and you know, we had a conversation about this previously, yeah. you know, about how this is added. It's more of like training as well. Mm -hmm. How was the experience? Um, the experience was really really great. Um, reason being getting to meet entrepreneurs from other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. Most of them doing something similar to what you're doing mm -hmm. or above what you're doing. Right. So for me, the experience, learning from them, and the fact that they're also from Africa, Yeah. majority of our problems are not different. And mm -hmm. most of them, when you ask them, um, access to finance is also a problem for them. Right. So learning from them, how they tackled that, how they got past that is mm -hmm. one thing I really cherish. And mm -hmm. the fact that you know, I could meet people from other parts of Africa mm -hmm. that I have never dreamt of, like Madagascar. Oh, instance. Madagascar. Yes. Yeah, I think I met somebody from Madagascar when I traveled to Indonesia for the 
you know, global platform. Okay. You know, that kind of shows how yeah. traveling and networking it does. does. Yeah, so does. how is your network and how has your network as an individual benefited you? Do you believe in your network is your net worth? You know, do you believe in that? 100%. Tell me about it. No, 100%. Now I do because initially when I was growing, mm -hmm. all, I figured, all I thought was oh, I need people to give me money so mm -hmm. when I get the money I can do this. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at it again, I'm like, I don't really need the money. I need the network because mm -hmm. When I get the network, I could get the right money. Yes. So for me, the network is everything. And each time I go to events, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that. I've day. seen that. <laughs> you've even been to events you weren't invited. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> that was because I really needed that network. I yeah. really need to, you know, be there. So for me, that's my key um, takeaway for 2024. Okay. 2024 is all about networking, mm -hmm. getting to know people, getting to meet different people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is my goal this year. Yeah, but apart from that, how do you maintain a network? You know, uh, you know, by constantly communicating. Yeah. By constantly communicating with whoever you've met. Yeah. Um, keeping them up to date with whatever you're doing, getting their own view of um, your stuff, what you're doing. Yeah. I think um, for me, that is one key important thing. Because it's really easy to actually have a huge network, mm -hmm. you know, when you travel to different places. But the maintaining it, is communication the only way? Because you can't be texting and calling them all the time. So what kind of communication are you talking about here? So it depends on the type of person you meet, the energy you both have. Okay. Now I'm crying too. Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> so it depends. Yeah. So most of the time, if it's a corporate sort of meeting, mm -hmm. it's more of emails. Okay. Yeah, and honestly, you don't need to be bugging the individual every now Every now, it, it yeah. has to be when yeah. you need but the individual. When you need be, yeah. yeah. And what I try to do as well, from those that I've met, um, when it's festive season, mm -hmm. like New Year, I send them a New Year greeting message. When mm -hmm. it's Christmas, I send them a Christmas message. And then I update them with challenges I am facing or success yeah. I have achieved. Yeah. So that is how I try to maintain my network. Oh, nice. I think it's a good way to actually maintain it. And Gambian youth are not really f also fond of having business cards. You know, uh, all those things are important. Or do you, do you believe in that? Uh, the business cards are important, but now mm. I try to think differently because now we're in an era where everybody has a cell phone. Well, yes, so and obviously climate change, uh, um, you know, there's climate change. Um, I mean, I'm a journalist. I'm not as... I'm a journalist, climate activist okay. in a way, uh -huh. you know, because I've, I've participated in the COP28, COP27 as well, uh -huh. and that has taught me a lot. Now we're trying to get away from paper. So maybe having business cards, like electronic business cards, mm -hmm. how about that? What yes. do you think? Um, I think that's the way forward because that will save us um, less pollution, less papers in the atmosphere because if I just have one card where you can just scan my QR code yes. and get all the details, why do I need to print 5,000 cards? You don't Because when that. I was going to the uh, Mandela, I printed 500 cards. I mean, I oh, my God. Like, Rose, really, 500. That's, God, a, lot that's a lot. And you gave it out? Yeah, I did. I did. Even though I came back with some, but at least I gave out majority. Okay. Wow. And the ones I gave you, they were worth giving my card. They're worth, because you're, you still have an contact con with, contact them. with yes. them, which is which is all that you need at the end of the day. Wow. So, Rose, what are some of the challenges with Quick Cook? You know, you talked about Rose Afrique yeah. and how starting Rose Afrique, mm -hmm. it's proceeds from rules are free mm -hmm. to quick cook mm -hmm. so how how difficult is it so part of the difficulties i do you peel these um you can you, you may not so okay. It okay i'll let you do this all right <laughs> it's your show it's my show <laughs> yeah um part of the challenges i'm facing is in electricity really yes electricity is very expensive and currently most of my products that i have are frozen products okay so um yeah electricity is very expensive yeah and access to the right mm -hmm. packaging material mm -hmm. is also um, a problem because, like you said, climate change. And all climate that. change. So I'm trying to work climate on smart practices. Yeah. So I'm trying to work on eco-friendly packaging material. Yeah, eco-friendly. That's the right word. Instead of using um, plastic bags. Yeah. It's not my favorite, but we're working towards it, and I'm sure we'll get there shortly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's difficult because in Gambia, most of the packaging is even imported. It How is, about that? How it, do you deal with that? Yeah. So currently, I get mine from Senegal. But Look I'm, at that. I've also just learned that um, Yusundur has opened um, a process, no, a packaging facility sort of. Okay. In Jamnyajo, I think. Yeah, Jamnyajo. Yeah, and they do all type of packaging. Jamnyajo is actually developing. I've That's been there I once. Have. You did? I, yeah. Oh, wow. Was oh, wow. it Jamnyajo? Where was I? 
I've been to Senegal, but I was not in Dakar. Uh -huh. I think it was Jamnyajo. It's the new yes. settlement, right? Yes. It's yes. Jamnyajo. Yes. Yes. I've been, I, I was there. Okay. So I had to travel from there to go to Dakar. Okay. Yes. And how was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it was a good experience. Yeah, so I had the, the processing facility. Uh, sorry, not processing, but yeah. packaging. Um, what's it called? Industry or so that right. he used to do has worked on. So I'm thinking if we have access to that, that would really help. Yeah. That would really help in terms of our packaging sourcing. Because let's say now as this brand is going, let's say I have an order for a thousand packet products or so. Yeah. I'm really going to struggle to get my packaging. Material. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, very. But I'm sure we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. And I think young people, these are areas that they work might want to get into like packaging yeah you know ensuring that when there's a gap they identify that gap and say to themselves this is a gap this is a business gap uh -huh. so i have to make sure that i venture into that yeah but that is if you can spot out a problem a problem That's right it. yeah you can only do that when you can spot out a, a problem, problem and then derive the solution from, from that uh -huh. so what's your take on irregular migration we've seen a surge in young people using irregular migration like using irregular routes uh -huh to actually travel to Europe, yeah. we've seen a surge, especially end of 2023. Yeah. And just today I was doing the story mm -hmm. on Spain. Mm -hmm. Within three days, the amount of, um, the amount of young people mm -hmm. that have, not young people, babies, women, and the list goes on, mm -hmm. that have arrived in Spain, is so overwhelming. What's yeah. your take on it? So my take is, um, I don't even know what to say because I lost an uncle two weeks ago from the same route. Oh my, I'm yeah. so sorry. So Sending you some love here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So it's, I don't know how to deal with it, but it, it really affects me because a lot of them are saying they don't, they don't find anything to do here. Yeah, yes. But do they really apply themselves? Mm -hmm. For me, that is the key question. Because yeah. honestly, I don't... I know a lot of people say, oh, she's comfortable. That's why she wouldn't think about that. But yeah. It's not about being comfortable. Yeah. When I was leaving my full-time job to do this, I only yeah. had $500 in my account. Oh, wow. And most of them that are living, they're living with 40000 plus. Yeah, 40000 So with that 40000 plus, yeah. you can start up a small business. Right. So I'm thinking um, they are not being targeted the way they should be targeted, right. the young people in this country. Right. Because I think programs should be tailored to their needs mm -hmm. and not what they think the young people need. Yeah. They should, there should be a not interrogation, a question and answer session within the young people. Yeah. Do we need to cover this? No, no, no. Let's okay. Let's fry. Okay. So it will fry brown. Okay. That's nice. Okay. So I think there's more investigation or more questioning that should be done towards the young people. Talk to them more. Try to know what they really need than just assume and then build programs that don't really yeah. fit to Into what. And you know what, just today on my, on my the morning show that I host on QTV, mm -hmm. our African proverb was. Um, when it itches, mm -hmm. you get to scratch it. Oh, <laughs> and who gets to itch mm -hmm. gets to scratch. Okay. So it means that you know, you, you feel it and you know no, it. Yeah. So um, governments, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it, the fact that you mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Governments, um, parliamentarians, mm -hmm. private sector, everything, yeah. do, in doing their corporate social responsibility, responsibility, have to be more engaging as to engage with people. Ask them what they need. Yeah, you can't just go and dig a borehole in a community mm -hmm. when they do not need a borehole. True. Maybe they need a market. Maybe they need this. They will never take so care. you feel like, you know, there's not enough consultation. Yeah. As to, yeah. Do you think there's consultation but lack of political will? Which is which? I'm thinking both. Both? Yeah, because right now for me, mm -hmm. um, the things that I really need in my business, it's mm -hmm. not available in the country. Mm -hmm. So people like me, I need machines that can do my work faster. Yeah. But I can't, I can't get it. Mm -hmm. But yet still, you're bringing in money to train me. Train me on what? Yeah. So that's the key. You don't really know what my problem is. So why are you helping me? Helping me with what? Yeah. yeah. So I think um, the, the, the need to know what the youth you, really need, need is a yeah. must. And then... From there, we can derive solutions or results for them. Yeah, so it has to be clear, right? Yes. Can I please borrow this yes. one? It has to be really clear, which has been a challenge over the years. Yeah. And you know what? At some point in time, mm -hmm. I thought irregular migration stopped. No. I, I thought so. But it will never stop. I don't think so. Yeah. Because each time they go, they tend to get new routes. They tend to get new routes. Others tend to find a simpler way. And aside from that, mm -hmm. the influence. The influence is also no, there. You want to borrow this? Yes, okay. You know, the influence is also there. You know, they, they, they're just being influenced every time. 
and most of the time the, the, the argument is that the pictures that you see online yes. of people using this route yeah. does not really translate to what it's they're going through true. over there. I think, you know. But I've seen videos of where some have been honest as to what yes. they really encounter in the journey. Some, I've seen that. some, some yeah, very some, few, some. you know, very few. I mean, so what directions should we take now, you know? It's worrying. It's worrying, but invest more in the youth. You know, with QCell too, we are doing our corporate social responsibility. So with, with the Q Group, for example, we have the Q Group Foundation. Okay. Through the Q Group Foundation, what we do is to make sure that we sponsor young people in STEM. Because, I mean, Mr. Ade will always say this. He's my boss. But he's like, we have too many lawyers in the Gambia. True, true. You know what? We need more people in STEM. We need engineers. We need neurologists. You know, we need um, people um, who are um, specializing in lung health. I have asthma, for example. I can't even test my allergies in the Gambia. All of those things. So, so you know, um, it's, it's a bit challenging with the meager resources, obviously. What, what do you think it has to do with our education system? We need to revisit. Yeah, because when I was in school, I've never thought of entrepreneurship because I've never heard of it. Yep. Right? Yep. So I only started hearing about it what, in my early 20s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what was happening on those right? And the syllabus were a bit. <laughs> my, my colleagues would always say, we've been sent to school to learn how to draw lizards, cockroaches, while other parts of the world, other young people are taught how to develop drones and other, you know. IT. The fact that I labeled the cockroach, <laughs> the fact that I had to label the fish, uh -huh. the amoeba, uh -huh. or paramecium, paramecium <laughs> I cannot deal with this. Like growing up now uh -huh. that I'm a journalist and I'm not using it, uh -huh. makes, no sense, right? makes no sense. I studied commerce in school at Nusrat, okay. but there's nothing that I studied apart from scale of preference where you scale your, your preferences, accord, and which we do daily. Okay. Apart from that, I can't done. remember anything that I've learned mm. that is actually beneficial right now. Wow. So I totally agree with you. We need to revisit the yep. education system. The syllabus is, I don't, I, I don't think it's. And another thing I really love about other African countries is mm -hmm. the tradition, the local languages are being taught in school. OK. We can not have been the all of book correct via text message. Exactly. 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 In Nigeria, they do the Yoruba exam, they do the Igbo exam, like they do everything. But Gambia, we don't have any of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, all of those <laughs> things. Yes, but so I think these are things we'll really need to look into again. Yeah. Because when you look at other African countries, countries. They're, they're taking steps that we should have been taking. Yeah. And for us to grow, to meet them at that stage where yeah. they are currently. Yeah. So how is the food going? Going well. Going well. Now we have the onion in. Okay. We're almost there. So we're doing oyster sauce. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I back in school, home economics. Uh -huh. Did you do home economics I back did. in school? I was an art student. You were an art student. So how is home economics back in school? Because we're talking about education system. Yes. How is home economics back in school beneficial now? So one thing I've learned from my home economics teacher was yeah. clean as you go. <laughs> clean as you go. I remember that. Yes, and that's what Did you go to St. Teresa's? No. <laughs> okay. That is one thing I remember. Clean as you go. I can remember yeah. do not soak vegetables. Clean them quick yeah. because you don't want to lose the minerals and stuff. That, yeah, yeah, so you don't want to soak them in water. Mm -hmm. You just want to clean them real quick yeah. and just put them aside. Okay. You know, that's one thing that I've learned. Am I doing this right? Well Clap for me. You know. So we're just letting the onion fry. Yeah. Trying to get the brown. Yeah. And yes, actually. Some yeah. Yeah. Like your yeah. Fry. Mm. Tastes good. Tastes good. Mm -hmm. Tastes good. Crips, yeah? Mm, crips is good, yeah. Mm. This is the best way to have it done. Yeah. And you asked me to pass by the bakery <laughs> to buy some bread. <laughs> and I got some fresh bread from the bakery. <laughs> And all of that. And I know my I know my camera operators are all ready. Are all ready to have a taste of the food. But remember when you used to peel during school? I think I want sauce. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, that, that's, that's the what kind of thing we're today. doing today, yeah. Yeah. But those memories are very important. You know, those are fun fun, fun memories. Yeah. They, they are. are. You know, sometimes it's just good to reflect back on your life True. and just, you know, take a look at where you are right now. Mm -hmm. For example, I wanted to be a journalist, I had to do commerce, 
you know, that's not what I wanted now. I'm a journalist. So but you, know, you wanted to be a journalist. You wanted to be a journalist. Yes, but really? I had to do. I wanted to be either a journalist or a lawyer because I understood that that's my path. Uh -huh. You know, I knew that. I went, always wanted to know about things. I always think Curiosity. on my feet and all of that. So, so you know, but also I think career guidance. Uh -huh. You know, it's lacking. Yeah, 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 true. Because at the time that I was going to school, I didn't have that. You know, there's no counseling side true. where they would invite you to interrogate you about what you want to become. Yeah. I talk to kids nowadays. What do you want to become? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? It's not bad. Janjambure Kankurang Festival. What can I say? A career. What can I say? You never know. Afkon be then you bookankurang. Afkon bu paseni. Gami then you bookankurang. What are you saying? I'm not doing that. If you want to be a kankurang, be a kankurang. It depends on how you, want you to... the kind of kankurang that you want to be. You can plan to be a perfect kankurang. Okay. Bring in entrepreneurship in the kankurang, kankurang. and it's going to work. <laughs> Whatever you introduce entrepreneurship, it will work. You never know. Encourage them. No, I am. kankurang, <laughs> you, It can work. <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything is possible. Yeah, so that kind of kid needs, you know, the right guidance. So, Rose, I think it is now time for us to talk about where you want to see this business. Because, you know, young people, obviously, when you're starting a business, you, have, you start as a startup. Mm -hmm. But there are plans to see yourself even further. So what are some of those plans? Uh, part of my big, big plans are to be the number one stop shop in Gambia for all ready to cook local ingredients. Right. So come now I'm a kind of a shopping center in well. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was the same thing I want for quick cook. Mm -hmm. So everything. everything ready to cook. Okay. Well I'm gonna mean you need two do till night over and you let us know what the main ingredients you want. Mm -hmm. You chop all the sub levy, the fact that basically you don't have to do it. Okay. We don't mm -hmm. want you to go through the process of washing and dicing and chopping. Okay. That is the bigger plan for us. So how soon? Let's say in the next five years, we're okay. working towards this thing. Right. But how about medium term? Um, so medium term, currently, our product line have increased. We started mm -hmm. off with four products. Today, we are 32 different products. Mm -hmm. So Thumbs we're getting up. there. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. So that's the plan. That, that, is, that is really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. But the challenges are there anyway. They're there. But for me, one thing about those challenges are they make me stronger. Right. Because the fact that I can grow from rose after 2016 yeah. this is 2024 yeah all those nights that i've cried mm -hmm. that i've been down that i've been depressed it made me stronger today mm -hmm. so things that made me cry in the rose africa brand would definitely not make me cry in the quick cook yeah. brand because i've grown off that i've learned how to take care of those problems okay. and grow off them so what are the three things that you're going to tell a young entrepreneur that is watching right now um, that is starting a business. Are we going to sandwich this now? You want to is sandwich? it ready? Sandwich and start eating. It is ready. But it is ready. No, I told you we were going to do anti jaima anti jaima Okay, anti jaima <laughs> jaima half moon. Half moon. Yeah, so, so what are you telling a young entrepreneur uh, who's just starting? What I'll tell, you, tell them is don't, like this is my favorite quote, don't sleep on your dreams. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're, come not over here. Kude kan kuranga buga neka no problem. Yeah. It depends on how you want to do that Kankurang business. Wow. It is a business, definitely. Mm -hmm. I was just laughing, but yeah. now I... Yeah. Na no, yeah. Yoka wow. So yeah. don't sleep on your dreams? No, don't sleep on your dreams. Wake up on them. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're selling, yeah. muy gerte, muy whatever it is, mm -hmm. just learn how to package it. Yeah. And be passionate about what you're doing. Man, whatever I find myself mm -hmm. doing, I give it my all. Mm -hmm. I am very passionate about the Rose Africa brand. I am very passionate about Quick Cook. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything I lay my hands on, I do it with passion. Mm -hmm. And I think it has gotten me this far. Because you already the source of the content. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Okay. So what's so, the next step? The next step would be document everything you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> document Tell me a story. How how was that beneficial to you? Um. So before I applied for the Mandela, I was never documenting anything I was doing because I thought I have everything in my head. But I had known that that year, I really wanted to get the Mandela. Mm -hmm. I really want, like that year was just to get it. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing, what I started quick cook, I started documenting everything that I was doing. Mm -hmm. I started writing, even though it wasn't like a complete document, but mm -hmm. somebody had been down to what mm -hmm. I did, what I didn't do. 
So when it was time to apply for the Mandela, it was easy because mm -hmm. I already have bits and pieces there. So mm -hmm. for me to just write up my story was really, really easy. Because then go ahead, but mm -hmm. you don't know when you need it. Okay. If I hadn't documented, because my Mandela story would have been not half too, and half, half and half, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I have to buy some stuff to put there. But yeah, it was so real. Authentic. It was so through. It mm -hmm. was just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Most of the time when I cook, I can't eat. Mm -hmm. Does that happen with you? Mm, no. You're a chop sanga. Mm. No, a chop sanga. <laughs> I cook the food, I eat the food. <laughs> That's what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really good. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're married in the Your husband. What? You saw I, I did it with black pepper and just vinegar. No, Kambola timeline. No. You see oyster in the Gambia, it's really, really tasty because it's from salt water. The first half, the devil of that. Most of anybody says, "Sing kaba halera," then kore muna ye inono. And the fact that young children are still digging in, you're providing a chance for them. Yeah, sustainable income. Why? Because no money in co package. No money in co package. Because mon nyom so yaya send lo. Next thing, then kore dry. Then muna kabo wa wild man fi. I have the dried, I have the smoked, I have the boiled, and I have the powder as well. All in the valley. Oh, in the valley. That's amazing. So do you think of partnering with government, maybe training women? There's already an association for that, for mm -hmm. the women oysters. Mm -hmm. It's called Tri Oyster Women Association. So do you think you can work with them? I can't work to them when I get to the stage um, I can buy in bulk. Because okay. currently it's more worried you know, from all the women. My storage facility is not big it's not, enough. Mm -hmm. But when I get to that stage, my goal is to buy off all the women harvesting oysters. Okay, from there. That's yeah. amazing. That's and for some reason, I'm just seeing that as tomorrow. God willing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but I'm just seeing that um, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because of just the different ideas that you have and the different areas. You're so, you know an individual who makes sure that you pay attention to detail, oh, to yes. every detail. Oh, yes. And that is what helps, you know, to grow a business and all of that. Sure. I know you talked about the fact that Rose Africa will be coming back stronger. Oh, yeah. But how soon? I'm, I'm really emphasizing. <laughs> I love Rose Africa. I know everybody does. I love it too. It's mm -hmm. my first baby. But yeah. it definitely, it, it is coming. But again, I can't be doing too many things. I learned that from the Rose Africa mm -hmm. brand mm -hmm. when I was doing the bags, the yeah. shoes. So I really need to get quick cook up and going until it doesn't need me as an individual. Mm -hmm. Then I can venture into other businesses. But Rose Africa, come on, when it comes, mm -hmm. they got contact. Okay, so do you um, have you employed people here? Yeah, currently I have three staff. I have one um, part-time and I have two full-time staffs. Nice. Yeah, I think when you came, you met one, but the others have left. Okay. And some of them come, the part-time comes Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And then the others come um, Monday to Saturday. Every single well. day. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I see everything's moving. Smoothly. And uh, like I said, congratulations once again with the Entrepreneur of the Year Award with the Carnival Municipal Council. Because like I said, that is showing the amazing work that you've done within a short period of time. True, true. You're just one of those COVID-19 babies. <laughs> I, I think so. You're a COVID baby because, right? A strong COVID baby. A strong COVID baby, you know, considering yeah. that you're able to start this business through, you know, challenges that we've all have learned mm -hmm. from the COVID. Mm -hmm. And then you're married, you know. Yes. So how is that? You know, sometimes marriage, as young people, yes. marriage gets to stop us. Sometimes marriage starts as a barrier from us <laughs> achieving certain... I'm not saying this because I'm not married. <laughs> Disclaimer. There you go. Yes. You go. I'm not saying this because I'm not married, but I've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think my story is a bit different because my husband is so, so supportive. Mm -hmm. I think um, he's the brain behind Quick Cook, I'll say. He's not in the Gambia, though. Okay. But he finds as much time as possible to help promote my stuff on his platform. Mm -hmm. He shares on his stories day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Before you guys came, he's like... Mm -hmm. uh, where are the Q cell people are they mm -hmm. here yet? Mm -hmm. No, so he's 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 on top of it. Okay. So I'm grateful because that is one thing you really need. Mm -hmm. If you have a partner who understands your vision, mm -hmm. who understands your struggles, and mm -hmm. is there for you, mm -hmm. he makes work easy for you. So that is that is very 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 key. Yes. But Rose, to be honest, I'm so glad that we are able to do this oh, together because you. it is very important that you know we we share the stories of yes, young people. True. If true. we do not tell these stories, mm -hmm. you know, young people are not going to be aware. Mm -hmm. And like I always say, this program is also some sort of mentorship program. Yes. Because when young people watch, they get inspired, mm -hmm. and it um, eventually um, ensures that they also, 
you know, look for just something productive to do. Mm. So, Rose, what are the final words? I'm so sad we are about I to know. just finish up with all of this. I, just, I am so sad. Yeah, I just wish it could have been a whole episode over and over and over. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited I'm doing this. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm proud to be a young Gambian, a female for that matter, mm -hmm. in this dynamic industry doing a marvelous thing, creating space for other young entrepreneurs to also thrive because I can't do this all alone. Mm -hmm. And if this honestly really grows to where I expect it to grow, mm -hmm. we will be employing more Gambians mm -hmm. and that will also reduce the unemployment rate and mm -hmm. also create skills for mm -hmm. people in um, agro-food processing. Mm -hmm. So my final words on this show is be you, be yourself, believe in yourself mm -hmm. and don't underestimate your powers. Mm -hmm. Whatever you believe, put it to practice get on it and you'll be here amazing i i i really really love it i'm, I'm, I'm now you look emotional I'm, I, yeah because i don't want <laughs> i don't want to let you go because thank you're you, so sweet thank you, so you know much. i'm thank you know you. and and you know what within the six years that i've been hosting this program mm -hmm. i have learned so much yeah Today, for example, I'm an environment, I report on environment. Mm -hmm. That is because I've engaged with a lot of young people Today, who yeah. are environment activists mm -hmm. and they have motivated me mm -hmm. and it's been beneficial. True. And now that I'm here, you know, there are just a lot of things that I've learned as well. True. So I think in as much as when I interview young people, they're equally glad that I'm providing a platform for mm -hmm. them, but I'm equally also learning a lot. For the past six years, you have helped me build. Young people of this country <laughs> have yeah. helped me so much to yeah. build my capacity in different areas. And I am super, super grateful about, you know, you guys always willing to come on the show and share, share, share. Thank you. And like I said, I just feel like tomorrow, or the day after, <laughs> you're going to achieve those goals that you Amen. just mentioned. So can I have another bite? I, because I didn't have lunch, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to have like my last bite. That's all right. Like my last bite of the show. Um, yum, yum, uh, yum. Um, mm -hmm. It's really good. Come your house, the first half. The first half, the. Take a full of that. Take a day full of that. So, till we come your way. <laughs> Next week, mm -hmm. with another interesting program, mm -hmm. make sure to stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when the year began, um, we have this partnership with UNICEF. UNICEF is our biggest funder. They're putting a lot of money in the show okay. to make it happen. Okay. So we want more partners, more organizations should come on board mm -hmm. to support young people True. and support the program. If you support the program, you support Rose. Mm -hmm. You support every other young person True. who's watching this program. Because one way or another, those young people are learning something from this program. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it for Jainaba, but you're doing it for Gambian young people. So till I come your way next week with another interesting program, I'm just going to get a bite. Get it right inside. <laughs> Thank you. All. Thank you. And to the camera crew. <laughs> the camera crew. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have an amazing team mm -hmm. to the entire camera crew. Butch, Eliza, Mamat, Aduboy, who make sure this program is edited on time. And just to the entire, you know, QTV team that makes sure that this program comes on air for the past six years. We've been doing it and we've been really consistent. <laughs> tell me that again you know so thank you so much to the entire production team yeah. whenever I call on them even if it's not their duty they will come and support the oh, program because they understand you. that they're not doing it for me but they're doing it for young people all over the country yes. so bye for now and have a good evening thank Bye. you